Okay, we'll go back to our reference here for a second. And you can see these screws are uh, a star shape in the center. Uh, we're not going to worry about matching that exactly, but we're going to do something uh, similar here. All right, so back into Max, let's go into our uh, bottom view. And we'll just zoom in on the left hole, maybe. Okay, and we'll go back into shapes, and let's uh, grab a circle. All right, I'm just going to draw that out. And don't worry about the size right now. Something like that's good. And I'm just going to line these verts up with the uh, edges running uh, both ways here on the actual bottom mesh. Okay, we just want to make sure that we have this, you know, pretty much centered. All right, we'll also change the color to black, make it a little easier to see. And let's change our inflation settings here to maybe adaptive, uh, just so it's as smooth as possible. And I'm just going to dial this down a little bit. And we'll do about maybe five on the radius. We want a little bit of a gap there, just so we can catch some light and shadow in that. Okay, and let's also grab another shape here, and we'll use a star. Gonna draw that out right in the center. And it doesn't need to be super huge. We'll do maybe something like that. And we'll just straighten out the edges. Okay, and we'll make sure that that's centered. So I'm gonna go up to the align tool here. And we'll click on the circle. Okay, we'll choose center, center, and okay. Just to make sure that's dead center of our circle. We can hide the bottom now. Change this color to black. And let's also maybe attach it together. I'm gonna grab the circle first here so we can keep our inflation settings. And we'll right click and convert to edible spline. Go over to attach and attach it to the star. And we'll turn off attach here. We'll zoom in on that in the perspective view for a second and we'll add a shell modifier. Okay, add a shell. It doesn't matter the thickness. Let me just change the color here so it's a little easier to see. Whoops. Okay, and we'll just leave it like that and collapse it to edible poly. I'm gonna go into the left view, select the top verts and delete them. Alright, we just want to have a plain surface here so that we can clean it up a little easier. Okay, and we can't leave it like this, else it's not gonna render correctly. Uh, we also need to smooth it. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just uh, connect up some of the verts to the outside here. Okay, there's not very many on the start, obviously, so we're gonna do all of them. All right, so I'm just gonna grab a vert on the outside and uh, kind of one that lines up a bit and connect it. And we'll do this for each of the points. Okay, so just uh, kind of match it up with the vertex on the outside. Doesn't matter if it's uh, entirely exact on each side. Okay, and this bottom one, we'll just go right down here and then we'll take out this edge. So select that edge and hit remove. back into the top view here and we need to add some support on this so let's go to border maybe select the outer border go up to scale hold down shift and just slightly scale that out just a bit and we'll do it again hold down shift and scale it out okay and the exact same thing around the star here okay so select the uh, border on the inside and just slightly pull that in we just want to add uh, some edges here Okay, I'm going to do it maybe twice. Okay, and that should uh, support the outside side first, fine. So we'll turn off border. And actually, before we get rid of that, let's uh, maybe extrude the inner border or the outside border up a bit. Okay, so select the outer border again, hold the shift, and just drag it up. And I'm going to actually just take it up maybe like that, and then one more time. Like that. Okay, we'll do the same thing on the inside. Grab that border. And on this one, we're going to do a little different. We'll shift drag it up. Okay, we'll go into the uh, back view here, or the bottom view, sorry. Pull that up a little bit more. All right, we'll go to scale. And in the bottom view, we're going to scale it in. Maybe something like that. 
and we'll cop it. Okay, I think that should work fine. Uh, so back in the bottom view, okay, I need to quad this up, so let's connect these up. Let's maybe connect these ones first. Okay, I'm just gonna do connect that way and then we're gonna cut the rest of them in. Okay, so from this bird up here, all the way down to the bottom, this one up to here, and this one over to here, which will give us quads in the center there. Okay, and we do need to support it. So let's grab an edge here, ring, connect, two segments. I'm not gonna take it all the way down. We want to be, you know, a little bit of a soft rollover, so do about 88 or so, and okay. And for the bottom there, I think we'll just uh, maybe inset those polygons for a support edge. Okay, so let's go to polygon. Let's just select the polygons, left view, deselect these ones. Get these ones as well. So we just have those bottom ones selected. And we'll do, let's do another inset here with a really tiny amount. Okay, let's smooth it out and see. All right, not exactly the same, but uh, it's close enough. Could have maybe made the uh, star shape a little bit bigger, but that's fine. I'm gonna leave it like this. Okay, don't worry about the mesh looking weird here. Um, that's just because these are obviously giant end gons. Um, but because we have this inset twice, it's not really gonna give us any distortion on the outside. And uh, obviously these poly polygons here are completely flat. Uh, so you shouldn't have any smoothing errors. All right, so let's call this maybe like, uh, I don't know, border screw uh, left. And we'll also center that pivot one more time. And we'll just unhide everything here and check it out. Okay, we also need to move it into position. Okay, so we'll just uh, push it right into the hole there just slightly in it. Okay, that should work fine. Next thing we're gonna do is go into the bottom view one more time. Uh, make sure we have that pivot point centered on the screw. And let's actually move it to the center here. So I'm just gonna go back to effect pivot only. Okay, with that active, we'll make sure it's centered. And we're gonna go up to the move tool and zero out the X axis. Okay, now I'll just move the pivot point to the uh, origin. It'll leave the screw over there. So we'll close that, turn off the button. And now that the pivot point is there, we can actually just do a mirror. Okay, so a mirror, copy on the X. And that should line up with our other hole uh, pretty well here. Okay, and you can just zoom in on that and make sure that's lined up. All right, we're good to go. Right, I'm just gonna change the color of these two to black. And we'll also put maybe uh, that blue shader on for now. Okay, so the next thing we'll do is tackle that uh, mesh. So we'll jump into our uh, bottom view once again. And let's grab that bottom piece. Let's hide everything else. Okay, and as you can see, our hole here for the speaker is a little bit uh, tapered more at this end. And that's because we have an extra edge right here that we don't have over in this section here. Um, so let's even this out. Let's go back down to the poly and we'll just grab these edges here and do a connect. And we'll just do maybe one segment, uh, no pinch, no slide, and okay. And we'll also do that over here before we forget. Let's just connect those edges up and that should uh, even out the hole for us. Okay, so <clears throat> we're gonna need to uh, create this mesh and that's can be a little bit tricky to do. Um, I'm actually gonna use a technique of my brother's, uh, Chris's that he used on a tutorial a long, long time ago. That's on total for uh, creating a garbage can. Uh, so we'll use a similar technique to his. Just gonna drag out a plane here. And we're gonna line it up in the center here by just lining up this edge with those edges there. 
and we want it to be slightly bigger than the hole. Uh, it doesn't need to go super big, so let's do like 14 by maybe like 40. And we need a bunch more edges here, so let's take up the length sags to say like 15. Maybe a few less. And we'll do like 12, and let's try like 36. Okay, so those look pretty square for the polygons, which is what we want. Okay, so we'll just go with 14 by 40, 12 by 36 on the segments, and convert this to a poly. Okay, and obviously we need to have these edges turned so they're going diagonally rather than up and down and left and right. Uh, and to do that, we can either use the spin option up in the new graphite tools, uh, but if you don't have those, you can also do it by just grabbing all the edges, going over and hitting connect, and uh, doing 170, no pinch, no slide, and okay. All right, I'll cut a bunch of diagonal edges in here for us. Uh, to get rid of the originals, we'll hit Control I to invert the selection and Control Backspace to take them out. Okay, that'll just leave us with these diagonal edges. Okay, so to actually create the mesh from this, we're actually going to use the lattice modifier. Alright, so as you can see, that's still solid right now. Uh, if you put a lattice modifier on here, uh, you can see it's going to go absolutely crazy. Uh, but we can just take this radius way way down we'll just zero it out for a second and we'll also turn on just struts only here okay and let's do maybe like 0.2 on the radius okay you can see that's going to create uh, a pretty nice looking mesh for us here um, the struts are obviously these pieces between each of the vert vertices and uh, if you have it on uh, joints it's going to create some additional ones on top of the vertices or both if you have that checked off Okay, and we don't need to use that, we'll just use struts. Okay, now we'll be a little thick, let's take it down to maybe 0.1. And maybe a little bit thicker, 0.15. Okay, this is a really good way to create a, a, a grill mesh on like a vehicle uh, as well, if you ever need to do one of those. Okay, so let me just turn off those edges. And you can see it's a little bit uh, sharp there, so let's turn on smooth, and I'll kind of smooth it out for us. Okay, and I think that looks fine for size, so uh, we'll just do by struts only and uh, radius of 0.1 or uh, 0 0.15. Okay, we're just going to leave the outside edges because uh, we're not going to see any of that stuff. You could delete them out if you want to, but uh, it's really not necessary. Okay, so we'll just check this out in perspective and make sure it's okay. And that looks pretty good, so let's move it down. Way down to the bottom here. And we'll just fit it in uh, the back of this hole. Let's do this in perspective. Okay, so we'll make it look like it's stuck more on the back than actually sticking through the uh, sides. We don't want to leave it like this. It's not going to look right, so we'll just push that up until it's just above those back edges. Like that. Okay, and obviously with the curve here, uh, it's intersecting there. Let's see if we can fix that maybe with an FFD. All right, so we'll go over into the uh, front view and let's collapse this down to edible poly now. And let's put on an FFD and I'm gonna use maybe a four by four. Okay, we'll drop this down to control points. Um, and if you've never used an FFD before, uh, it's pretty much just a control mesh for bending or moving around uh, large sections of verts. Uh, it's exactly the same as the lattice modifier, I believe, in Maya. Okay, so we're just gonna select these right ones and we'll bend this up a bit. And we'll just kind of, you know, fit it here. It doesn't have to be exactly right on, but something like that should work fine. Okay, so once you have that in there and it's bent the way you want, just, you know, collapse it back to edible poly. All right, so that'll take care of that mesh. And we'll use uh, uh, another one for the other side, obviously, and probably the same mesh uh, for the speaker on the front uh, later on. Okay, and I'm actually just maybe gonna undo that for a second. Uh, the convert all poly. Let's just leave it with the FFD applied uh, in case later on we wanna straighten it out, we can just delete that or disable it and it'll flatten the mesh back out for us. Okay, so we don't actually have to twist it back. We'll just leave it like that. 
Okay, so back to the top view, and we'll move uh, the pivot point to the center again. So let's center to the object first, and with the button still active, right click the move tool, zero out the X axis, close it, turn off the button, and do a mirror, copy on the X. All right, that should line it up on the other side perfectly for you. Okay, so let's maybe just grab both those pieces. Just gonna change the color to black, so it's a little easier to see. And we'll throw on uh, our blue shader. Okay, so let's unhide all and see what we have so far. Okay, and later on we might need to put uh, something in behind these vents so that we don't have light coming through there when we render. Uh, but for right now we're just gonna leave it like this. All right, I'm actually gonna get rid of these uh, colors. Let's just make this one maybe gray. And we'll just do 120 gray on that. Okay, we'll keep our animated green material here. And I'm just gonna change the color of that maybe to blue so it's not so hard on the eyes. So I think that'll take care of most of the bottom part. Uh, we'll probably do the porter a little bit later on. Uh, we still have quite a few cuts to make on the front and back uh, for the holes for the cameras and the button, obviously the home button. Uh, but we're looking pretty good. Let's just change this color to black as well so we can see those edges a bit easier.